Shalom Rastafari. This is a very, very special day, my brothers and sisters. And I want to greet one and all in the Hebrew. Le'alte l'chaim tovim u le shalom, which is Hebrew for may you immediately be inscribed and sealed for a good year and for a good and a peaceful life, my brothers and sisters. This is what's known as Rosh Hashanah. And it is conventional for us to say Shana Tova or Shana Toba, which is a traditional greeting on Rosh Hashanah, which is in Hebrew, a good year. Shana Tova. As well as another greeting in particular is Shana Tova U Metuka U Metuka, a good and a sweet year. Now, this is Rosh Hashanah, what's called Rosh Hashanah, which is the civil new year. And it's also the Feast of Trumpets, the Festival of Trumpets. Now, my brothers and sisters, and mothers, of course, what we like to discuss in this very special message and, and video is Rosh Hashanah. And first things first, let us get a little bit of background on this. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh means head, ha shana means the year. So it's the head of the year. It's known often as and called the Jewish New Year, but more correctly it's the Hebrew New Year for Hebrews and Jews and Samaritans as well. This is a very, very special day. The significance is New Year's Day according to the Hebrew calendar, and it commemorates the creation of the world as narrated in the Metzhaf Kedus in the Holy Bible. And it begins what's known as the Ten Days of Awe, culminating in Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. It begins the start of the first day of the Hebrew month of Tishrei, and it ends, generally speaking, at the end of the second day of Tishrei. Now, some of the observances for this very special day is praying in the Mikorah, which is Ethiopic for the synagogue, hearing of the shofar, which is the ram's horn, and festive meals with the hala. Hala for my Ethiopic and Hebrew and Rastafari people is like ambosha. Ambosha, which is a, a kind of a white bread that is braided or twisted and is eaten at this particular time. It's a festive food. Other symbolic foods that are eaten during this time is apples dipped in honey, fish heads, as well as new fruits on the second night of this holy observation, and of course, refraining from work. What we'd like to do is touch on one of the key significances of this particular holy day. Now, as we mentioned briefly in a, another video and another update concerning Rosh Hashanah and the etymology of Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah does not appear in the Torah, which is the Hebrew Bibles, and it does not appear in the Western or the King James Bible as Rosh Hashanah if you would like scriptures to refer to this particular holy day, um, go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24, and it refers to this festival, the festival of the first day of the seventh month 
which is called in the Hebrew Zikaron Terua, Zikaron Terua, and Zikaron Terua is a memorial with the blowing of horns. It's also contained in Numbers chapter 29, verse 1, and it calls the festival Yom Terua, or the day of blowing the horn, the ram's horn, is what is signified by shofar. And it symbolizes a number of very, very important subject matters, such as the binding of Yishak and the animal sacrifices that were to be performed. In Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1, there is a general reference to the time of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, as the beginning of the year. But it is not referred to specifically in reference vis-a-vis -vis to the holiday or the holy day of Rosh Hashanah. Since this particular day is signified as the Feast of Trumpets or the Festival of Trumpets, let us touch on trumpets right here and the seven holy days and then we will take a listen to if you will a listen to the shofar a listen to the ram's horn being blown so the first thing we want to do in this very special update and this very special time is to touch on the feast and the festivals. So let us look at this book right here that we have. Um, it's a very old book, as you can see. It's very much worn apart. It's a it's a um, concordance, or what's known as the uh, Cruden's Complete Concordance. You might be able to find it online or even purchase a copy as you can see this is well worn and for good reason this particular concordance under feast it lists each of the seven feasts that occur at the three times of the year up here on our dry erase board we have the Kal Kidan which is the word agreement of the covenant referring to Exodus chapter 23 verses 14 to 19. Three feasts in particular. There are three feasts which all the males of the Beta Israel are to appear before yod Hey, wow Hey, or Yahweh, Adonenu. And these are the feasts of Passover, which is known as Fasika or Pesach, the Harvest Festival or Shavuot, and the ingathering, which occurs at the end of the year. This particular time is coming up on that particular end of the year celebration that's known as the Feast of Tabernacles. But the third of the three annual feasts is called biblically ingathering or tabernacles tabernacle or booth or sukkot which is the plural of the sukkah which commemorates the Israelites going through the wilderness and living and dwelling in booths in the Ethiopian sense this could be likened to the tikkuls the tikkuls which are like thatched houses or thatched abodes now this day, which commemorates the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, or Zikaron Teruah, the memorial of the Teruah, or the Trumpets, is defined like this, according to Crudens. It says, the Feast of Trumpets was celebrated on the first day of the civil year in the month Tishri, 
answering to our September. This day was kept solemn or set apart or edus, holy. All manual labor was forbidden to be done upon it or in it, and particular sacrifices were offered. And then it gives us a reference to Leviticus chapter 23, verses 24 and 25. So since this is the feast or festival of the trumpets, let us meditatively listen to the sound of the shofar. My brothers and sisters, please stay tuned and please meditate upon the shofar. Kia, take a breath. And three, Shavin, take a breath. Nine, Teruos. The end of the Tasharat. The second set, Tashat. The Tikiya, take a breath. The Shavarim, take a breath. The end to Kia. This is the third set. The Tart. To Kia, take a breath. To Ruan, take a breath. And that was the Tekia Gadola, the long one. Now, my brothers and sisters, that right there was the sound of the shofar, the shofar, which is the ram's horn. Now, there's a very interesting mystery or mystir, which comes straight out of Egypt that's connected with the shofar in this particular time. And we would like to touch on it and share it with one and all. But once again, we'll like to say to our brothers and our sisters and, of course, the mothers, uh, Shana Tova or Toba, which is to say, Melkam Hadis Ahmet in the Hebraic sense. My brothers and sisters, please enjoy this holy day and please honor this holy day if you are able to in meditation, in prayer, as well as in thought. Once again, Shalom Ras Teferi.